So just a quick view of the agenda there, and you'll note that the agenda is also in the chat, uh, and along with a link to the survey, which Mel has put in there, if you could please complete the survey. I know that's difficult to do once the meeting's ended, so please feel free to do it whenever you like during the meeting if you wish to, um, or as I say, at the end of the meeting, that would be really helpful for us to understand any feedback from you. So the agenda this morning, we're going to have a very quick Oxlep skills update and that will include some invitations to some uh, webinars that we'll be putting on. There'll be an opportunity for members to introduce themselves and provide some updates on activities that are happening with all of you. There'll be uh, some information about how we're working together to raise awareness of apprenticeships and vocational career pathways. And then also some information around a new programme which Oxlep will be running called the Social Contract Programme. And then we'll have uh, some suggestions, please, if you could start thinking for items for the agenda for the next meeting. You'll note that we have decided to alter the timing of the meeting, so it's only an hour long. Hopefully that will be a little bit more accessible for most of you um, and you can get on with the rest of your day. Thank you, Nikki. Next slide. Nikki, I can't see the slides anymore. I don't know if other people can. No, I think they've disappeared, Nikki. Right, I can see them. I can Hold see on. everybody now, but not the slides. OK, I will reshare. Perfect, thank you. Just hold on until we see. There we go. Thank you very much, Nikki. So I'm Sarah Marlowe. I'm the Oxlab Skills Hub Deputy Manager and I'll be leading the meeting this morning and supported by my colleague Mel Ringer, our Oxlab Skills Advisor. Also, my colleague Nikki is supporting with slides this morning and she'll be speaking to you briefly as well. Thanks, Nikki. So on to the Oxlep skills update. So firstly, uh, to introduce the new training provider network logo. So now that the forum has been running successfully for a consistent length of time, as I say, I think it's our sixth triannual meeting. It's time that we had an official logo to thank you for your consistent engagement and to celebrate the work that we and you do to unite and to share as a group of local providers. So hopefully you like that new logo Logo and you'll see that on all of the slides going forwards and any of our documentation. And secondly, to welcome my colleague Nikki Wakefield, our Oxlet Careers and Enterprise Company Hub Lead, to speak briefly to you about the training provider de directory which the team has been establishing. So Nikki, over to you. Great, thanks Sarah. Um, morning everyone. Yeah, just a very quick um, update from me. Um, before Christmas, we sent out an email. It was following the last um, meeting actually, when we had a really good discussion about sort of supporting schools and how you'd like to actively make sure that schools were aware of, of what you have to offer and we're inviting you in to support any careers activities they might have. So we decided to pull together a training provider directory um, thank you to all of those who have replied to the email so far to say you wanted to, to send us through some information to include in that. Um, for those that haven't got around to that yet, please do. Um, the sort of thing we're looking for, we can resend the email after this call if, if that would be helpful. Summary of your organisation, the types of apprenticeships you offer in terms of level and also sort of um, roles as well. Other vocational training opportunities that you might offer companies that you work with, where you're actually based as well, and very importantly, the best contact for schools to reach you. Um, we know that a lot of training providers are, are really active um, out there in schools at the moment, which is fantastic, and we'd like to get more of you out there because the schools absolutely are wanting to really um, amplify and shine a light on apprenticeships and technical qualifications. So really great if you can support us with that. To anyone who's already done it, as I said, thank you very much. We pulled to all of that information together in a spreadsheet and we're, we're sharing that currently with schools on a basis of that they've got an event running up we're sharing with them um, the um, providers that we think would be most relevant to that event that they're running but going forward we'd really like to have a, a proper directory online directory that schools can search and reach out to directly themselves but thanks um, Sarah back to you 
Great, thank you, Nikki. So the team have been doing some really great work on that, and we, I think, like to as a, as a skills team develop that further as well. Um, I'll tell you later about new social contract program, which will have some apprenticeship advisors attached to it, and be great if we could really fill that directory with information about the work that you do as providers and what you offer, so that we can include that in that program going forward as well. But uh, do let uh, Nikki know um, that you want to be involved and included. So on to webinar dates. So you'll see on your screen there are some webinar dates and links listed. So just as a bit of background information, the Oxlap Skills Agenda is supported and delivered by the Oxfordshire Skills Board and they operate as a subgroup of and under the rules of governance of Oxlap, Oxfordshire Local Enterprise Partnership, and that's been happening for over a decade. And it's from those firm foundations that the Oxfordshire Skills Board assumed the responsibilities of the Oxfordshire Skills Advisory Panel. And that happened early in 2019 and that was commissioned by the Department for Education. So the skills advisory panels have been bringing together employers, skills providers and key local stakeholders to better understand and resolve skills mismatches at a local level. And skills advisory panels are part of mayoral combined authorities and local enterprise partnerships and there are 38 of those across England and the Department for Education has supported skills advisory panels with grant funding and that's primarily been to produce high quality analysis of the local labour markets and to publish a local skills report and that sets out the local skills strengths and the local skills needs and how the skills advisory panel proposes that its area addresses its key priorities. So we've now been working on the second iteration of the skills advisory panels local skills report and that's going to be launched via a webinar on the 15th of March. It comes at a time when the Department for Education is trailblazing new local skills improvement plans. You'll have seen that in the levelling up agenda. In eight areas of the country, those will be launched and those are being developed by employer representative bodies. So local in it's a skills improvement plans, it's a bit of a mouthful, are part of a suite of reforms launched in the Department for Education Skills for Jobs white paper and that aims to put employers more firmly at the heart of the skills system. An evaluation of the eight trailblazers will inform the national rollout of that programme. But in the meantime, and before those local skills improvement plans are rolled out across the country, it is still the Department for Education's intention that skills advisory panels and this local skills report should continue to influence the behaviour of local partners and feed intelligence to central government, including to sectoral focused skill teams and the national level skills and productivity board. So I'm delighted, therefore, to invite you to join us at the launch of the second edition of the Oxlep Local Skills Report and Plan, and that will be on Tuesday the 15th of March at 10 o'clock. And you'll see there the first link in the list of webinar dates um, is that link to the registration page for that webinar. And then secondly, as a result of completing that data analysis for the local skills report and plan, we recognise that there were gaps in the prescribed national data sets around employment and enterprise for minority ethnic communities at a local geography level. So we've commissioned the data analysts from Oxfordshire County Council to bring together any available data for the first time locally to inform the report and plan and to provide a data set which can be shared with local stakeholders. So we'll look um, to refresh that data once the latest census data has been made available from mid 2022, so later on this year. So please do also attend the webinar and share that link for people who might be interested in uh, employment and enterprise of um, Oxfordshire's ethnic minority communities.
and that webinar will be held the day after the launch of the local skills report and plan on Wednesday the 16th of March at 1 p.m. So again the link there on the screen at the bottom is for that second webinar so we do hope that you'll join us. Next screen please Nikki. Thanks. So following on from the National Apprenticeship Week last week and the feedback that we collated from the interactive session that we ran in a previous meeting and that was really about how best to support you with advertising and highlighting apprenticeship opportunities and to enable opportunities for you to get to know each other better and um, to share the things that you're doing. We'd like to now introduce this section to the agenda, which is member introductions and updates. So it'd be great if each member could introduce themselves, give a brief overview of any recent and current projects that you'd like to share. It could be around apprenticeships or something else that you'd like to make us aware of. Uh, maybe you're doing some activities for National Careers Week, for example. And it'd be great if you can let us know of any opportunities that we can help share for you. So I think Mel, you've got a suggestion for starting us off. And then if people would like to raise their hands, if they'd like to speak next, and Mel will suggest the next speaker. Um, we we'll try to get through as many of you as possible in the time allocated, but if we look like we're going to run over, then we'll add it to the agenda again next time. Or you can email us at the address shown on screen there, skills at oxfordshillette.com, and we can look to share any opportunity, opportunities that you might have via social media or schools newsletters, for example. So Mel, over to you. Thanks, Sarah. So um, Hannah Bladen, General Manager at Ignite Sport, has kindly offered to kick us off coming to, from a car near you. Um, she's joined us to uh, just give us a bit of an update. So thank you. Over to you, Hannah. Yeah, th thanks, Mel. I am actually sitting in my mobile office, which is actually the car outside St Verna's School in Dicot at a careers event. So um, I'm living I'm living what I'm about to tell you. I have got a colleague inside. I've not just left the stand un unattended. Um, yeah, so I'm, I work for Ignite Sport UK. Um, funnily enough, we work in the sport and physical activity domain. Um, and we we are, as if you like, our core business is delivering PE and sporting opportunities in and around the Thames Valley. Um, but, but that's not the interesting bit really for today. The interesting bit is that we're a, a, a direct employer of apprentices and we are a also a registered training provider of apprentices. Um, and we are also um, a post-16 provider of a, a programme called Velocity Football, um, which I'll, I'll come on to in a second. And we also have an adult education contract to deliver uh, skills, quals, level twos for learners 19 years plus. So we have um, quite a significant um, education and training arm. Uh, so much so actually recently we, we, we've branded anyone who knows, rebranded anyone who knows Ignite Sport. Um, we just used to call ourselves Ignite Sport. We've now got Ignite Sport plus we've got Ignite Training as well to sort of differentiate between the two sides of the business. Uh, so when a customer's coming to us, you know, wanting to know about the training education side of things, it's handled by Ignite Training. And if it's more the sporty stuff, particularly young people focused, uh, then that's Ignite Sport. So um, we um, just start very off with very much here and now. I had a really successful National Apprenticeship Week last week. We decided as a business that we wanted to really max it out, follow the themes every day. We were really lucky and it was genuinely luck, luck, luck that we got a slot on BBC South today, last Monday evening, uh, a 90 second little montage about apprenticeships that we offer um, and about the, about the benefits to young people and a cross section of our directly employed apprentices were, were interviewed and that went out at 6.40 in the evening. Um, last Monday, so it was a really great start to National Apprenticeship Week, um, and then we were able to build upon that all week with lots of different articles and um, social media coverage, which was which was positive. Um, and just in general, oh, someone's got their hand up. Do I, do I need to stop? No, I'll carry on. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that was really good. So thanks to everyone who supported that and who who um, supported all our different social media activity. 
it felt really good as a collective, felt that Oxfordshire was a really vibrant noise that was being made around apprenticeships. Um, in terms of our general apprenticeship offer, we, we do make a massive effort to get out to most of the schools and colleges around the area and really promote our services, a bit like I'm doing today. Um, we offer apprenticeships from level two upwards. I will share info up to level five. And as I say, we have a full time uh, football vocational uh, program called Velocity, which is basically playing football a week underpinned by a BTEC qualification in sport. And that's really, really popular, um, particularly growing popularity with the girls. Traditionally, it's been a boys programme, but we've got we're in our second year of girls offer, which is really good because girls are massively still underrepresented in our sector. And and then just um, and just finally, really, uh, adult education, um, so 19 plus level two qualifications available to any any resident in Oxfordshire. Um, we've got loads of places on courses at the moment for people. If, if you know of someone or you think you have a route into a market where skills development is, is needed, again, it's in sport and physical activity. They're absolutely free to the learner, so I'd be keen to hear anyone on the call about about that. And then very finally, conscious of time. Um, I've recently uh, just agreed with colleagues with Mel and Susan that I'm going to uh, have a stab at being one of these vol volunteer uh, enterprise advisors. Um, haven't actually started yet. I have agreed that I'd be tagged to uh, the Oxford Academy, which is, as you all know, is a very big, big, big school on the on the edge of Blackford Leeds. And I'm really looking forward to, um, if you like, using the networks like these meetings today and my links and contacts and taking them into the school and really opening up the opportunities that those young people at the Oxford Academy can get for, in terms of careers and um, future pathways. So um, plenty going on. Um, I'll stop there. Thanks, Hannah. Anybody got any questions for Hannah? I think you covered it all there, Hannah. We've got um move on to the next person. I know conscious of time, but thank you for that update, Hannah. It's brilliant to have you on board uh, as an enterprise advisor. I know the team are very excited about that. So, Cad, you've got your hand up. Um, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Caroline Walton. Um, I look after the Endpoint Assessment uh, Centre here at um, ELS. I put my hand up because uh, Hannah's got one of our apprentices there at St Baroness School uh, called Hassan. So Hassan's gone over to give a presentation to the students. Um, we are a, a registered Endpoint Assessment organisation um, and we deliver Endpoint Assessment services for a whole range of apprenticeship standards. Um, but during National Apprenticeship Week, um, we tried to do quite a lot to support the local schools. Um, the, our apprentices here, so we are a, a registered apprentice uh, employer. The apprentices went on to uh, get radio to talk about apprenticeships, promote apprenticeships. Um, they've been helping local schools and I was trying to remember the schools that they're supporting. And I've got down here a uh, Carterton Community College. I've got St Barnas School, Didcot Girls School. Um, we've got Abingdon and Whitney College. Um, and also we ran some industry liaison groups during National Apprenticeship Week. So we were quite a niche EPAO as well. So we were running our first um, industry liaison group um, and that was for a very, very niche standard. And that was for the Ordnance Munitions and Explosives standard, which I'm, I'm not, I don't believe any of you on here actually do that standard. Um, but like I said, we do do other standards like the business administration and customer service, um, operational departmental managers. So I think we are local on the patch um, and um, I wanted to come on today just really to say that we are here if people are looking for additional support with their endpoint assessment services. Um, so that's it from me really, but I just wanted to give a shout out to our apprentices Grace and Hassan who have done some amazing work and are supporting the local schools, working with Mal at Oxlep um, and the team. Uh, there are two apprenticeship, uh, apprentice ambassadors, sorry. Thank you, Kaz. Yeah, thank you for lending us your wonderful apprentices as well. Both Grace <laughs> and Hassan are fantastic ambassadors and have already started inspiring many students um, with their, their visits to schools. And again, if any other providers are interested in um, our ambassador scheme, give us a shout and we can have a chat about that. Thank you for that update, Caroline. Um, Alison, you are next. Next hand up. We'll come to you next. You're muted at the moment, Alison. That's it. It would be me that did that. I knew <laughs> someone would do it. We've all done it. We've all done it. Yeah. <laughs> Morning, everyone. 
Um, so um, I'm Alison Jameson. I work for Oxford Professional Education Group as the head of apprenticeships. Um, we've been involved in delivering apprenticeships for about five years now, um, but for only um, only in the last year have we actually delivered as a main provider. So previous to that, we were subcontracting. So the world of apprenticeships in you know, as a main provider is, you know, obviously quite different than than subcontracting. And, and so we're sort of still establishing our feet in, in, in many cases um, around the sort of vast um, criteria that we, we need to meet. So our offer is level threes to level six professional apprenticeships. So we tend to offer um, courses that are sort of sales and marketing and sort of advertising related. So um, we do uh, um, some apprenticeships in PR, um, procurement, project manager. We've got just over 100 apprentices on at the moment. Um, so we're getting into the um, it, we're, we're now having to do a lot more reporting and have a lot more systems than we than we used to. Obviously, having a hundred apprentices is is um, you know we're starting to get into big numbers now for us anyway in in our first year. Um, we haven't really done much to engage uh, with schools or colleges yet. Um, initially, our numbers for under 19s was very low, but we've now managed to get a 50 50 split of un, uh, apprentices under age 24 and over age 24. And uh, again, when we first started, our percentage split for males and females was very much 10% males, 90% females. And we've now managed to sort of even that out a bit as well now. So we've got 50% males and um, 40% males, 60% females. So we're hoping now that we have a few more level three apprenticeships on offer than we did initially that we can start to engage more with the sort of schools and colleges. We are a national provider. We do um, uh, deliver nationally, but our head office is based in Oxford. So I'm very keen that we establish that sort of um, partnership with the Oxford community. Um, and I'd like to sort of um, be able to share best practice with some of the other providers that are in, in the local region and um, identify any partnership opportunities. I mean, if there was any training available as well that we were running or, or others were running, it would be fantastic to sort of work with others, um, especially on those sort of grey areas, really. You know, like, like for us as a new provider, you know, we probably haven't done a lot on how to support send learners and things like that. So, you know, those I've just seen Melanie advertise a, a workshop on E&D, you know, for that, for us, that's fabulous to be able to attend those sort of things. Um, because um, like I say, where our numbers are still very small, it's hard for us to interpret our data really at the moment to see which, you know, necessarily where our weaknesses are and where our um, strengths are. So to be able to engage with other partners um, locally would be fantastic for us. That's it from me. I've also got another colleague who's attending today, Lisa White, who's um, Lisa is um, part of our business development team. So you probably Hi see us there. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Melanie. Hi Lisa and thanks Alison for that update, that's really useful, thank you. Um, Paul, Paul Smith, you've got your hand up as well. Yeah, hi, good morning. Um, my name's Paul Smith, I'm the Regional Manager for Oxfordshire Advanced Skills. Um, we are still a fairly new training provider, we've been on site kind of now going into our third year. Um, we are purpose built just to deliver engineering. We're currently delivering engineering qualifications through apprenticeships from level three to level four. Uh, we do include an HNC within that as well, but this year we will be extending that to deliver further level fours uh, within space and automation. Uh, and also we will be starting to start look at delivering level sixes as well. We are keen to start reaching back out into the area. <laughs> COVID for the last two years, it's been quite difficult to go out and uh, reach out to the schools. 
Um, but we did have a very successful week during National Apprenticeship Week where we launched our first EDI roadshow. So we brought a lot of equipment now to go out and start uh, attacking uh, these roadshows. Um, so we've spent probably about the best part of a quarter of a million pound on equipment to take out so young people can actually see engineering in action and actually get involved, uh, play with the robotic arms, uh, get involved with the 3D printers, all of that kind of good stuff. Uh, so we started off, we went to Oxford Academy last Monday morning and then we came over to St Brynus last Monday afternoon. Uh, and then we had our open day last Wednesday and uh, we had a record number in terms of attendance. We had just over 200 people uh, on site for our open day. And these were all people that are looking for apprenticeships for this year. Um, we also had the Minister of Science visit us last Wednesday as well on site, um, which was quite exciting, a good opportunity for him as well. Um, but in terms of National Apprenticeship Week, as I say we were just non-stop. We had a project, if any of you have seen it, uh, we ran alongside Jack FM. So we had the two presenters come in uh, and run two teams with apprentices uh, over three days, uh, very similar style to The Apprentice. Uh, and at the end, we fired one of the presenters, but that worked quite well. And that we saw uh, a large uptake uh, in terms of our open day off the back of that as, as well. So for us, it's very much building relationships in the area, getting our presence known, uh, extending our reach out to the schools. Uh, Lee D&I Roadshow will continue. That is in collaboration with UKA. So there is a significant investment in that for the future. Um, we won't just be targeting schools, we will be targeting community community centres as well, um, trying to get out to the underserved areas. So if anyone's got any thoughts on that uh, as they living in the past, then it'd be great to pick your brains uh, maybe after the call, a book in a meeting or something. Um, National Careers Week, we've got very similar. We've got another project with Jack FM we're running. We've got another open day. I'm also running a National Careers event as well. So we'll be having a number of our vacancies uh, advertised through a webinar with our existing clients. Um, and, and that's pretty much it at the moment. Like I say, it's a very busy time of year for us. We are seeing a record number of employers engaging with us. Our usual intake is between 50 and 70 per year, but this year we'll be taking on 120 on the level three programme in September, just due to the demand um, since Christmas, really. Uh, and that's pretty much it for me. Thanks, Paul. So that's just it. Just a few things then. <laughs> <laughs> just, a few things. just a couple of things going on. Sounds like very exciting times for you guys. Absolutely. Good stuff. And thank you for for um, filling us all in. And yeah, please take Paul up on his offer to to link up. It's a great opportunity to kind of you know to get to know each other and work and and also Alison as well. Ways to work together through this this network. Sean, we've got a hand up from Sean Grant. Hi, Sean. Hi. Guys, and so, um, so we're from Get Active Education, um, very similar to Hannah, to be honest, where we do, do sports coaching, have a football academy. Um, actually met some of Hannah's girls yesterday at a tournament in Vista um, for the girls. Um, yeah, we focus on your sports coaching, your business and your childcare, because um, that's a sector that we, we deal with. So your sports coaching level four, your community activator, your community health officers, um, going into customer service, your business admin, team leading, and then looking at um, teaching assistants, early years practitioner, early years educator. Um, yeah, just been networking really. Um, we've been on the main list for a training provider for the last last year, so we're just growing um, around about 60 apprentices and onboarding averagely of around about five or six each month. Working closely with employers and with employers completely, to be honest, um, just working on how we can bespoke a delivery service to them. So everything that we do is pretty bespoke to every client that we're working with, which can have its um, pros and cons. Um, but yeah, that is it really from us. Just keep it nice and short and simple. We're looking to work with anybody really um, that if we can help you guys or you guys can help us. Um, it's all about the learners for us. So we're more than happy to help um, and ship them with anything. Fantastic, thank you, Sean. Um, Kaz and Alison, are they are they previous hands rather than or new hands? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that's all the, all our hands up at the moment. Um, would anybody else like to uh, add to that? I can't get my hand to come down oh. for some reason. I keep trying. <laughs> it just it shows I've got a hand up the whole time. <laughs> I can't get it to disappear for some reason. Maybe I can. 
Oh, um, Ed, we've got a um, hand up from Ed and I'll see if I can put yours down for you, Kaz. <laughs> Morning everyone. Uh, uh, my name's Ed. I work for uh, Abingdon and Whitney College in the Employer Services team. Um, and and um, we are a general further education college with uh, main campuses in Abingdon in Whitney. Uh, we've got a rural agricultural centre just a few miles north of Whitney uh, called Commonly's Farm. And then we've got adult learning centres in Oxford and Kidlington uh, and a new construction skill centre in Bista, um, purposely for uh, plumbing, carpentry, uh, property maintenance, eventually electrical. Um, a lot of the stuff we've got going on at the minute is linked to uh, construction. So uh, our apprenticeship offer very much mirrors, mirrors the uh, whole college offer. Uh, so we do a wide range of professional courses, business admin, accountancy, HR, uh, management, uh, charter manager degree apprenticeship in partnership with Oxford Brooks University. Uh, and then we do some more specialist stuff, IT engineering, um, early years, uh, as well as um, engineering uh, operative level two, three, uh, engineering level four. Um, and we're just about to launch a new uh, HR pathway, so the recruitment was also level two as well. Um, Oxlep have been supporting us to build a new uh, building at Abingdon campus. Uh, so we've got a green construction skill center. So again, that will focus on providing carpentry, plumbing, um, electrical uh, skills uh, to the south of Oxfordshire, but that will have a little bit of a more sort of focus on renewable. Uh, so we'll have some air source heat pumps in there, some photovoltaics, uh, rainwater harvesting. And, and although a lot of the skills are the same that the apprentices need, um, it will just help them to develop further understanding um, about some of the, the ways that uh, technology are going a little bit more of a focus on uh, environmental stuff. Um, so yeah, a little bit of a snapshot of what's going on, plenty happening. Um, any questions, please let me know. Uh, John, uh, Edward, can I just pick up with you um, with regard to community employment plans? Just if you could just share how we've been working together on those and maybe that link into the new digital qualifications that you've been discussing with Oxford North. Absolutely. So um, Rachel from uh, Hill Group is coming to Bista. Uh, so that's why I've got to leave a little bit earlier because I'm going over to Bista this morning to meet her. Um, but we've attended a couple of the community employment plans uh, with Sarah uh, and looking at ways in which we can make sure that when developments are happening um, within the county, we can support with work experience opportunities, with apprenticeship opportunities, with training opportunities um, for young people locally uh, to get involved uh, with those projects. And it, 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 there's lots of stuff that comes out of those that isn't just specifically construction as well. Um, so one of the things that they were looking at at Oxford North was um, almost like a digital engineering apprenticeship standard um, because now rather than having photos and plans, if you're making a new development, you can now have an interactive 3D model that people can walk around. Um, so, you know, Oxford North are looking at training apprentices to be able to develop those 3D models. Um, uh, so that people can see what the site will be like, see what it will feel like, feel like um, whilst it's still in development and still in construction. So yeah, really, loads of really exciting stuff going on. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, that was a great update and lots going on for you as well. Um, Claire, you see you've got a hand up or you popped up on screen. Hi. Hi, Claire. <laughs> hi, uh, um, hi, my name's Claire McClenning. I'm the Apprenticeships Manager at Oxford Brooks University. Um, we've been running apprenticeships since 2018, um, concentrating mainly on four up until recently. Um, so we've got trainee nurse associates, um, advanced clinical practitioner, architect and senior leader. Now, the majority of those are level seven uh, postgrad um, apprenticeships. Uh, the TNA is a level five trainee nurse associate. Um, but we're really excited that in September we're going to be introducing the Chartered Town Planner, um, Digital and Technology Solutions Specialist, um, District Nurse, um, the Specialist Community and Public Health Nurse, 
coaching and senior leader development program. Um, so sorry, I had to keep reading them there. I can never remember all the titles exactly. Um, again, most of, of them are, are level seven. And as you can see, a lot of them are health related. So we work closely with our um, health trusts locally and in Bucks and Wiltshire. Um, but the, the majority of the help we really require um, from Oxlep, if we can, is sort of promoting the charter town planner and the digital and technology solutions to employers because the majority of these are existing employees as opposed to new employees and young people with it being a level seven so any help there would be gratefully received thank you thank you claire um we've just got a couple of minutes left um we can have a chat about that um outside and see how we can support you with that Brilliant, um, got thank you. A couple of minutes left. John, um, John Pitchforce, you popped up a second ago. Did you want to just add something about what you've been doing? Yes, I can do that. Um, Heritage Skills Academy is primarily automotive, although we do uh, classic marine as well as classic vehicles. We specialise in old school engineering uh, for an industry that really hasn't done any training for about 20 odd years. So it's it's very niche. It's not a, a huge market. Um, we probably have about 25% of our um, apprentices locally in Oxford. The rest of them are national. Um, we deliver mechanical apprenticeships. Um, and we about two years ago, we opened up uh, coach building. Um, so that's old school coach building, nothing to do with paint and panel repair on modern vehicles. It's really the uh, the artisan craft of of shaping and fabricating metal and creating works of art, really, <laughs> that drive. Um, we opened up a, a second academy at Brooklyn's Museum, where I, I'm actually speaking from now. Uh, we've got plans for a third academy. Um, in the uh, in the south of England and we're very we're very employer and apprentice focused we only have about 150 apprentices we know all of their names they know all of us we're available 24 hours a day really for them um, it's uh, it's a three and a half year apprenticeship and we do, do it in block release um, which we find is a lot more effective than day release and probably about 60% of the people who, who travel to us actually are residential as well. So it's it's quite an investment for the for the employers. Um, we don't deal with any big national companies. They're all small individual uh, or private companies. And I think it's it's unusual in 30 years of doing this. We've never really had um, private companies that were willing to pay for the additional costs of residential and things. So we we seem to be doing something right. Um, and we we don't want to venture out into anything else. We don't want to go modern. Uh, we just stick to what we do. But it's uh, it's a it's a niche area. It's and I think from people worry about whether it's sustainable. Uh, because it's vehicles and it's petrol and it's diesel and our answer to that is that it is because without the the old engineering skills and the old engineering standards we can't really develop the the, the new alternatives and so what we produce is is good problem solving engineers that can move out of what we do into the modern world very very easily um, whereas those in the modern world coming back to us find it very difficult. So I think we 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 have a relevant niche and a relevant sector for the country. That's what we do. That's great. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed that opportunity. I certainly did. Um, great to hear at the end there from John Pitchforth, who's a member of our Oxfordshire Skills Board um, that I was talking about earlier uh, when we talked about the local skills report and plan. Um, and also just great to hear about all of the open days, all of the opportunities that all of you have to offer. And a, really a plea, I guess, to um, make sure that you send all of those through to us in advance so that we can share 
share those and signpost people for you. Um, Paul Smith, um, I did hear the Jack FM Apprenticeship Challenge briefly. Um, it sounded great fun. Again, please make sure that you're making us aware of those opportunities, those um, sharing opportunities that you have before they happen if you can. I know often things on radio and TV are all a bit last minute, but do share them where you can. Um, I note that there's a keenness really to establish best practice partnerships and to share training opportunities. So um, in my mind, I'm thinking initially it would be great if you could email skills at oxfordshirelep.com with your requests. Obviously, we record this meeting, so we'll try to bring all of that together. If you could please send us your suggestions, your requests, if they're very specific as well. Um, ideas that you want to develop further through this network and let's have a look at how we can work that together to make those things really happen. Um, a suggestion might be a working group from this group who might like to bring some ideas together. Again, if you are interested in joining a working group, then please email us at skills at oxfordshirelet.com. I'll pop it in the chat now and we collate all of that information and maybe bring that together at the next meeting. Um, it was great to hear how colleagues are using the links provided by Oxlep. Um, to network and to share opportunities, to promote their opportunities and to widen awareness and to hear actually how the world of those larger main providers and all of the smaller providers, it's all very different. Um, you know, we sort of think of training providers as one group, but actually your work is very different. So it's great to have shared those um, experiences today and we'd like to pick that up further going forward. Um, so we're going to move on with the agenda now. Um, please, if you wanted to speak and didn't have chance again, pop us an email or pop it in the chat now and we make sure we pick that up in the next meeting. So Nikki, if I could ask you to share slides again. That's great, super fast. Thank you very much. OK, so the next item on the agenda is how we work together to raise awareness of apprenticeships. We've obviously done a lot of talking around that in your introductions, um, how we raise that awareness of apprenticeships and vocational career pathways. So just some background data there to share. Um, so obviously apprenticeships have declined over the last four years. We're all aware of that. There's been a declining trend in apprenticeship achievements of 22% over the last five years. Um, apprenticeship achievements have gone up in the last um, year from back to pre-pandemic levels, which is great news and exciting to hear there in, in the introductions um, and the updates that um, more courses are needing to be offered since Christmas. So that's great news to us. So well done. Um, and the number of unqualified people isn't decreasing in Oxfordshire. So there's a lot of people who are still unqualified who we still need to support. Um, most achievements in apprenticeships are at level two still uh, and level three qualifications and trade apprenticeship achievements continue to fall. So there's lots of work to be done around apprenticeships and supporting you as providers to deliver those. So uh, next slide, please, Nikki. I'm going to hand over to Mel now, who's going to just tell you about some of the work that we do to raise awareness, some of the work that's ongoing and um, an opportunity that you might want to be involved in. Mel, over Thank to you. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, so uh, National Apprenticeship Week first. Obviously, we all had a busy week last week. Uh, Nikki's team um, put on two webinars in um, association with Ask Apprenticeships. Um, we're also joined by Ed, who's just just had to go this morning um, and the University of Oxford to talk to parents and carers about apprenticeships and give them an introduction, um, better equip them to support their young people with their next steps on their career journey. Um, we had um, almost 270 families sign up to be part of that, uh, which was brilliant. Um, so we were able to to convey the message about apprenticeships at a timely moment for them. Uh, we also um, had, in fact, I, I should let you, Nikki, introduce the. Did you want to just introduce the apprenticeships dome to people? 
Yeah, no, I can I can just quickly mention that. So um, Thanks, yeah, I, on our Find Your Future platform, which you can see behind, we can see behind Mel, and if I was to turn my camera on, there you go, you can see behind me as well. Um, that is, and I think there are a number of you who are already on our Find Your Future platform. It's a virtual careers fair, um, which has 100 pods. Um, 70 or so are of employers, but the remaining 30 for um, higher education establishments and also training providers. I think we have about 20 training providers who actually have a pod on there. Um, and that's somewhere students can go to find out about local opportunities, local companies and actually reach out and contact people as well. But now they're sitting at the front of Find Your Future. So if you are going to go onto it today, there's a dome uh, which we have set up for a National Apprenticeship Week. And if you go into that dome, there's all sorts of different links to um, where you can find vacancies, to um, a, a guide for parents and carers, to quizzes that people can do around apprenticeships, um, to local, the Oxme website as well, to, which supports young people in terms of giving them information about different pathways, how particular subjects might link to different apprenticeships, etc. So it's a kind of a one stop shop for anyone wanting to explore and get some more information about apprenticeships, whether that's young people, whether that's parents and carers, or whether that's schools themselves and teachers and careers leaders. So yeah, if you haven't been on to find your future firstly pop on have a look um, if you do want to get involved as well we're doing a refresh of the platform um, in the next couple of months so if you don't already have a pod on there then and you'd like one let us know um, and if you do already have a pod on there we'll be in touch because it'll be an opportunity for you to refresh your content thanks Mel thank you Nikki um, could you also please go to the next slide <laughs> thank you so um, a quick update. Um, the other big thing that we've got had just been doing is the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Award. So this closed for entries and nominations at midnight last night. So we're just in the process of working through those. Um, they will be sent off to the category sponsors in the next day or so, who will then start the very difficult task of judging who is going to be the finalists. So um, we've got a fantastic range of employers and organisations you can see there who have sponsored and supported the awards. So we're really lucky to have the support of all of those people. And watch this space on the 7th of April, we'll be announcing the finalists. So again, fingers crossed for providers who've got apprentices, employers and colleagues in, um, in, in the running. And uh, we look forward to celebrating the successes of those very soon. Uh, next slide, please, Nikki. So, as I said, we closed yesterday. Um, the next phase will be um, in April when we announce the, the finalists. We will then have the awards broadcast, which will be a virtual live event I've, I've talked about before. Um, but just keep the date in your diary. The 19th of May from 7 p.m. will be when we're actually announcing the winners. So again, a brilliant opportunity to celebrate your involvement as providers in their journey. Um, and you know, lovely to to watch that and to be part of it. We're also planning to have a um, live reception face to face uh, on the 26th of May for, as an opportunity for for finalists and winners to receive their trophies. So keep an eye on those dates um, in the next coming months. Next slide, please, Nikki. And then finally from me, um, I'm a member of the Thames Valley Apprenticeship Ambassador Network, which is a network of employers across the region who come together with the LEPs um, to talk about promoting apprenticeships. Um, and we receive funding from uh, a national from the ESFA to do certain number of things. So one of the suggestions that's come up recently is whether or not it would be a good idea to hold a Thames Valley wide apprenticeship graduation event. So as I've just mentioned, we have the Oxfordshire Apprenticeship Awards, which is a fantastic way to celebrate the achievements of those um, apprentices who are nominated and who who go on to be finalist or to win. But this would be an opportunity for all apprentices who are graduating to get some form of recognition. So you may not make the final three in the awards, but you still get an opportunity to come along to an event. And it's hoped that will be a, a physical event next year, we think, given time scale. So what I really want to um, to ask you, and again, we probably haven't got time to discuss it in detail here. So if anyone's interested in this, is a Thames Valley wide graduation event something that you as providers would find 
useful, helpful? Would you like to get involved? Would your apprentices be interested in coming along? Would that be something that interests your employers? Um, we're trying to sort of gauge interest at the moment. I know some providers and some employers hold their own graduation ceremonies and we don't want to reinvent the wheel, but if there's an opportunity to provide an event that people could come along to and celebrate their achievement as completing their apprenticeship, then um, it's something that we'd like to take forward. So um, please let me know if you have any thoughts about that, if you'd like to have a chat, if you'd like to, again, perhaps this could form part of a working group where we discuss the in so, this in some detail. Thank you, Kaz. I see Kaz has just said that she thinks that's a great idea, um, and particularly maybe for smaller employers or smaller providers who don't have something themselves. It could be something we can do. So um, if you're if you're happy to, please drop me a line, um, get in touch and we'll we'll carry on the discussion. But we really want to get the views of providers because it, it wouldn't we won't go anywhere without you know without your involvement and your your involvement and interest in this so thank you that's great okay next slide yeah over to you Sarah thank you everybody that's great thanks to Mel and Nikki um, and lots of interest there in that working group around the graduation event Mel so we'll pick up on that as you say um, so uh, to uh, our item number four on the agenda um, this is to introduce to you ahead of its start date um, an exciting new program that we're going to be able to offer from Oxlep called the Oxlep Skills Social Contract Program uh, so we've achieved some funding and we are looking to support skills and employment for the communities most impacted by the pandemic alongside specific interventions which are targeted at vulnerable vulnerable groups and the four groups that we will be targeting are young people so those who've experienced educational disturbance and or unemployment or are at risk of becoming neat so not in education employment and training we're also looking to support those minority ethnic communities um, to improve social mobility. We're looking to support those furthest from the labour market and we're looking to support those over 50s who were particularly impacted through the furlough scheme. And we're looking to support reskilling and upskilling for that. Next slide, please, Nikki. So, the opportunities that would be part of that program that would be of interest to you as local training providers. We are seeking to return apprenticeship starts to pre COVID-19 levels. We're seeking to increase apprentice apprenticeship completions. We know those have fallen through the pandemic, so we want to make sure those people actually succeed through their apprenticeship. We're seeking to double the number of employers that utilise apprenticeship levy and we're looking to leverage around £660,000 worth of additional apprenticeship income in Oxfordshire. We really want to retain that money and bring in additional apprenticeship levy funding to the area to support apprentices. We want to increase the Apprentice Ambassador programme by 20% and I'll be leading on that work. And we also will be having a social mobility bursary fund. I can't give you any more detail than that at the moment. We're currently in planning stages, so I'll be leading that work. Um, next slide, please, Nikki. I'm delighted to say that we're going to have some new staff to support with that. So we'll have two apprenticeship advisors. We have an advisor starting on community employment plans to continue the work that I've been doing and really grow that area and be able to share opportunities for you in the in the strategic developments across the county. We will have a, a new administrator to support all of the work and we will also be able to support the careers and enterprise team with a new employer engagement enterprise coordinator. And then in Mel's team, we will hopefully be able to take on an apprentice for events and communications so that will enable us to work more with you on sharing all of those opportunities we've been talking about earlier. OK, so hopefully we can provide you with more information on that going forwards um, at the next meeting. As I say, we're just in planning stages, but we hope to launch that in late spring, early summer and we'll come back to you with more on that. Thanks, Nikki. 
So that's it. We've reached the end of the agenda. Um, it was great to hear from so many of you today and thank you very, very much for your engagement in that. Um, just some dates there for future meetings. So next meeting, 9th of June, it's a Thursday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Hope that works for everybody still. Um, and then the next one after that will be later in October. Seems a long, long way away, um, but I'm sure it will arrive pretty soon. So just to um, so to reiterate really to get in touch with us through the skills at oxfordshillette.com email through the chat here if you've still got any thoughts you want to add we are looking for members if possible to chair the meeting it would be great to get more input from you as providers as to what you want to achieve through these network meetings so if you do have agenda items or you'd like to take the chair we would very much appreciate that support uh, just to remind you again then before we close, uh, Mel has uh, put a link in for the satisfaction survey for this meeting, for this group. It would be great again if you could, could complete that because that feedback again will help us deliver what you need from this network. So thanks very much for your time this morning, everybody. Um, some really useful information from those network introductions. Um, really appreciate that and we'll build on those going forwards. And we look forward to seeing you again in June. Thanks very much, everyone.